So did you know that a woman's menstrual cycle can actually impact her relationship? And no, I am not just talking about the period. The period gets a lot of attention. But her menstrual cycle is more than just her period. It is something that is ongoing. Her hormones are constantly changing and that impacts her brain. It impacts her behavior and it impacts her relationship. So on today's episode, I am going to go week by week throughout the menstrual cycle and help you to understand what exactly is going on inside a woman during each week of the menstrual cycle. And I will have lots of tips for husbands, what to do, what not to do during each week. Also, I discovered that guys too have a hormonal cycle. It's not as complicated as a woman's, but it's worth talking about. And so towards the end of the video, we're also going to talk about the guy's hormonal cycle. So if you're interested in that, stick around till the end. Hello everyone and welcome back to another day in love. If you're new here, my name is Shanae. I am so happy that you decided to stop by. I also want to take a few seconds to say thank you to all the people who have found value in this podcast and have decided to stick around by subscribing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. A woman's menstrual cycle begins the very first day that she bleeds. So the very first day of her period, that's when her menstrual cycle begins. And during this time, she may be experiencing some period symptoms. We're talking about cramps or abdominal pain, back pain, nausea, fatigue, irritability, cravings, mood swings, anxiety, difficulty concentrating, etc. And the intensity of these symptoms varies from woman to woman. So you just have to get to, guys, you just have to get to know your wife and see exactly what her symptoms are and how intense they are. And I think it goes without saying that something like irritability or mood swings could affect a relationship at least your communication she might get easily angry over small things and so it does have the potential to affect the relationship so here's what you do husbands during day one from day one to day three just give her some space if there's anything that you can do to help make her more comfortable she's dealing with cramps or back pain or nausea if there's anything you can do to help make her more comfortable do it it will be greatly appreciated but give her some space she just needs some time to get over those period symptoms so that she can get back to normal now most women have a period that lasts anywhere from three to seven days so towards the end of her period you find that her mood starts to improve and then we get to week two and week two is a week of magic because her estrogen levels are really high and she's in a position where she's more talkative she's more positive confident productive and open now week two is a week when you have those hard conversations if there is some conflict that needs to be resolved week two is the week to do it if there is a big project that you guys need to tackle together week two is the week to do it so week two is the week to wine and dine her because she's in a better mood she's going to enjoy going on a date with you or spending time with you around days 10 to 15 is when ovulation happens and during this time her testosterone levels are going to go up which could mean that her sex drive is going to go up as well. So again, week two is a week of magic. It's time to prioritize physical intimacy. This is the week, guys, when you have no doubt in your mind that your wife loves you and she likes you. She enjoys being in this relationship. Then we transition into week three and week three is a bit of a tough week. It's during this week that the hormone progesterone comes to play. So her progesterone levels are going to be higher and this hormone is slightly sedative. So you're going to find that she becomes a little bit more withdrawn. She's quiet. She may feel a little less confident. She has a harder time communicating with you and getting her points across. Her sex drive may actually decrease. And you find that she holds back during conversations. So she may not want to initiate conversations or she just may not have much to say during conversations. Husbands, this does not mean that she doesn't like you. It does not mean that she's not interested in the conversation. But it's just the hormones that are playing her body are in essence, sedating her slightly. And mind you, this isn't happening 24 seven, but you're going to start during week three, you're going to start wondering, hold on, why is she so quiet? You know, just last week we we're having the time of our lives. 
what changed, what happened. So week three is one of those weeks where you don't want to have any tough conversations. You want to focus on connection. That's what she really wants this week. She wants to feel close to you. She wants affection and emotional connection. So this is the week to prioritize non-sexual physical touch. We talked about that last week. And we're talking about the cuddles, the back rubs, the foot rubs, the massages, all the things that help her feel safe and comforted. This is a great time to shower her with words of affirmation and to speak her love language a little bit louder. As we transition out of week three and into week four, she may start to have some premenstrual symptoms because week four is a premenstrual week. And so you may find that she started having some of those same symptoms from week one, or she might just be feeling extra irritable or frustrated or blue. So now this is the week when you probably think that she hates you. Or the jokes that used to land just don't land anymore. And then you just start questioning. You wonder, but hold on, we were best friends. We were best friends just the other day. And now I feel like she hates me. Now I feel like she cannot stand me. And girls is the same thing. Us women are probably questioning all our life decisions and wondering if we need to get a divorce. If this relationship is actually working or not. Everything becomes a little bit bigger than it actually is so husbands this is the week where you just have to be patient with her just just show her some patience and treat her well just just hang in there until we're able to get through some of those pms symptoms now of course i have to point out that fluctuations in your hormone your menstrual cycle does not give you an excuse to treat your husband poorly it doesn't give you an excuse to do whatever you want in your relationship so you can get away with it. No, but it does help you to understand sometimes why you're feeling this way when just last week you were fine and you were happy. And it does kind of help the husbands to also understand how to approach you so that they don't make matters worse. So I know that was a lot of information to take in, but don't worry. I went ahead and I made a handout for you guys. It will be linked in the description box below. You can just go download it to your phone or even print it out and stick it on your refrigerator so that you can remember these things because it is going to come up again. Her cycle is never ending. Something is constantly happening in her body. And it's good to just have this reminder that, hey, maybe we're not on the brink of divorce. Maybe she doesn't actually hate me. And it's just her hormones that are at play. But I did say I was going to talk about the men's hormonal cycle. So here we go. The main hormone at play in a guy's body is testosterone. And testosterone is responsible for many things. Let me read you the list. We're talking about energy. Testosterone is responsible for energy, confidence, motivation, sex drive, muscle mass and strength, cognition and memory. And the list goes on. So a guy's hormonal cycle... Is 24 hours in length so during the night when he's sleeping his body starts building testosterone and that peaks around 8 o'clock in the morning maybe even earlier but in the morning time when he wakes up his testosterone is at its peak no he's feeling motivated and ready to take on the day he's energetic he may want to have sex he's feeling confident he has it in him to tackle all the major projects but then as the day goes on his testosterone levels slowly decrease and they get to their lowest right before he goes to bed around 7 to 9 p.m. So what does all of this mean? Well, in the morning when his testosterone levels are high, ladies, this is a great time to get him to, let me not say get him, this is a great time to invite him to take care of some major project that needs to get done around the house. It could also be a great time for sex if you guys have the time and if you know, the wife is up for it. Then in the afternoon, he becomes a bit more mellow and a little bit more focused. So with his testosterone levels falling, his aggression falls a little bit. So this might be a decent time to have certain conversations that may be emotional, certain conversations that would require him to not be as aggressive or as pushy. It's a great time to resolve conflict. In the evening time, when his testosterone levels are at their lowest, he becomes a little bit more passive, more open-minded, maybe even a little bit emotional. And so ladies, if there's this, if there's some idea or some suggestion that you've been wanting to bring up to him, it's better to do it during the evening time or at night because then he'll be a little bit more open to it. But like I said, the guy's hormonal cycle is pretty straightforward. 
there isn't a whole lot at play like there is with the woman's hormonal cycle but it is very important and it can help you to understand why is my husband a little bit different in the morning versus in the evening or if i want to get something done if i want to resolve a particular conflict when is the best time to do it so the impact that hormones have on both men and women, it varies in intensity from person to person. But our hormones do have an impact on our brains, on the way that we think, on our behaviors, and consequently on our relationships. So my hope is that as you come to understand your hormonal cycle, that you will come to understand yourself a little bit more and you will be able to give yourself a little bit more grace and realize that there's a lot more happening beyond the surface that impacts the way that we think, that impacts the decisions that we make. And so instead of taking ourselves too seriously sometimes, I want us to pause challenge some of the thoughts that we have question ourselves and try to see is this related to my hormonal cycle is this thought that i'm having stemming from a true place of discontentment or is this just something that I, I need to give some time and some space well that's all for today's episode i want to thank everybody who watched this video to the very end remember to like subscribe share this with a friend who you think might find this useful but until next time remember to live a good life mm -hmm.